Good afternoon, South Africa, and a very warm welcome to you. It's finally Friday, and I cannot wait for the weekend. Now, today, we are so excited to have back in our loft for his second visit, Durban folk singer and guitarist, Majorzi. He is here, and he is incredible. I cannot wait to hear that gorgeous, soulful voice of his. And keeping on the theme of Durban, we were also at the Durban July last weekend, so we'll be showing you all of the action today. Then, if you are in Cape Town, you may have heard about the Logos Hope. It's a floating book for that is currently docked at the V&A waterfront. We were recently invited to go and check out and see what's going on uh, at the waterfront. Then we are joined by dietitian Kelly Schroeder to chat about something all women dread, menopause. We'll be taking a look how to manage it. And for women, a winner home on Afternoon Express, today we take a trip to Val de V to reveal our design contestants, master bedrooms. And in the kitchen, we've got darling Danilo. Thank you so much. Welcome to the weekend, South Africa. My name is Danilo Aquisto, and I'm so excited for this weekend. It has been one of those weeks. So this weekend, hopefully, going to be making something super delicious at home. And it all starts with a breakfast that Clem likes to always claim is a breakfast you can have at any point during the day. Welcome back. It's good to have you. Awesome, thank you. And have you picked up on the trend, like Fridays are dedicated to breakfast? I see that. Yeah. It's one of those days when you know that you're going to be in your pajamas most of the time anyway. So might as well have breakfast for lunch, breakfast and dinner. Absolutely. We're making one of my favorite breakfasts today. It is crispy fried egg on hummus. Oh, yummy. I'm glad you said it. hummus. How do you say it? It is hummus. Hummus. Hummus, <laughs> hummus not hummus. If one more person says hummus to hummus. me, I might just throw a fit in this kitchen. But it's really <laughs> exciting to cook with you. If you guys want to get all the recipes on the shopping list, they're on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. You can make everything that we make on Afternoon Express at home just for yourself. Now, Majosi was one of the first musical guests to perform on Afternoon Express. He has since released his acclaimed debut album titled Fire. And recently, he traveled to Amsterdam with electronic group De Hevels Fantasties and performed all over South Africa with rock band Monarch on their winter tour. More recently though, about a few months ago, he had to resist my mother who was swooning at a wedding. His career is definitely on fire. So good. I mean, that voice. Now, welcome back to our loft. I think you were one of the first guests yeah, that we actually interviewed when the show first started in 2015. Yeah, I'm so glad to be back, man. I've been wanting to, be come, to come back for a long time. I'm yeah, well, we're so happy to have you back. What have you been up to since we last, you, uh, since we last saw you? Um, a little bit of this and that. You know, um, I released an album earlier in the year um, um, called Fire. And uh, yeah, it's done pretty well. So I've just been playing at all like the festivals and around the country. I played at Inibos earlier this week. Um, and yeah, it's just been really fun, man. I love what I do. I love meeting people across the country and um, it's the only thing I'm good at, so I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> oh, I doubt that. I'm pretty sure you're good at a lot of things. But let's discuss your, it's your debut album. It's mm. called Fire. And imagine by some ridiculous chance somebody hasn't heard it. <laughs> How would you describe it? Um, I would say it's uh, there's a lot of folk, um, so primarily maybe the genre is pop folk, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, I don't mind. Yeah. And um, I think like there's a lot of songs about, uh, I generally try and sing about love, you know, and sometimes, sometimes there's one or two sad ones, but in generally like my love, this I sing up, is uplifting and um, it'll put you in a good mood and make you happy, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, I think it definitely works. Now, what was it like <clears throat> working in the studio versus gigging? Because you said gigging is really what what makes you happy and mm. what you're really good at. So what's it like being in studio then? I, I love, I love, I love both. You know, I love working in the studio. I love getting to put something that's in my mind out and put it on to, so that other people can hear it, you know, and it's cool because I have to work with other producers and, and other musicians and to try and get that vision out, you know, and I love that part of it. The only thing with studio is like you do it and then it ends and then you're like, mm. ah, then I miss it, you know, but where isn't playing, I'm always playing, you know, it's always a constant thing and um, I really love doing both, yeah. Do you ever have those moments, <clears throat> like, you know when you have a conversation with someone and then like way after the conversation you go, oh, why didn't I say that or I could have said that? <laughs> is it almost like that in studio working with an Album where you think, oh, I could have done that, or I would have liked to have done this mm. song. Definitely, definitely. You know, I'm always like, I'm still 
I thought, well, I think I'm still young and, and I'm, I'm always changing and, and my perceptions of things are always changing and I'm still learning. So you might learn to do something better and then you'd be like, ah, oh, I should have done it, you know, before. Mm. But um, that's, that's life, eh? Well, I certainly love listening to your music. And since meeting you, you're one of the, the, the most soulful people that I've ever met. You just come across <laughs> as being so sincere and so absolutely beautiful from the inside out. Now, you also um, are fully inked or you've got quite a few tattoos on you, which, which are quite sentimental as well. Have you gotten any new inks since we saw you last? Probably, yeah, probably. Um, I think I've got two more. I can't, this jacket is far too tight. I can't take it off. But um, yeah. I think I've got two more. Um, what are they? I've got a Winnie the Pooh on my arm. No, but I thought you only ever get tattoos to signify something. So you'll get, you know, something sentimental. So yeah. what exactly does Winnie the Pooh mean now? Because um, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> it's actually like funny. Like um, my mom used to call me Winnie the Pooh when I was younger, you know, and like oh. I was always like, um, I don't know, I have no idea why she called me that. Maybe I pooed a lot, who knows. <laughs> but um, she used to call me that all the time and I was like, and then I just got it, you know. And then I've got like a, a barbell on my arm. Um, I know, I almost love tat getting tattoos as much as I love playing music. So I'll probably have another five more next time I come. Yeah. yeah. Now, travel is something that I'm most passionate about. And you recently got to go to Amsterdam uh, with... Yeah. Um, was it Hevel's Fantastis and yeah. Francois Van Gogh? Yes, yeah, that's right. What was that experience like? Oh, it was amazing. It was... They're it, such fun guys. You know, they're really, really cool guys, man. It was my first time overseas as well, so, like, I'd never really? been on a, a, a big international flight and yeah. um, just got to hang out with those legends, you know, Francois Van Gogh and, and Pierre from the Hevel's and just got to meet really cool people, got to experience a different culture. Yeah. And, and see how nice the, the Dutch people actually are, you know. Oh, it's really, it is very different to everywhere else in New York. No, in, no, in, in for a, sure. In the world. Yeah, <laughs> I like, I, I walked around a bit, you know, I, I just, I literally just walked, which was very dangerous because there's a lot of bicycles just cruising yeah. around. But um, yeah, man, I just try to, I try to talk to the locals there and um, just go to different places and stuff. I didn't go to any coffee shops or anything like that, but. Um, <laughs> now you're gonna be performing for us a little bit later. Yes, what are yeah. you performing? I'm gonna be performing a song called Our Last Goodbye. And it's a, a song about a father on his deathbed saying goodbye to his daughter and stuff. <laughs> sorry, wow. sorry. I'm sorry. Didn't want to be a buzzkill in the afternoon. <laughs> no, not at all. Where do you get your inspiration from? Like, what, what is your process? Do you first come up with the lyrics or the melody, or how does it all tie in together? Um, I think it changes from time to time, man. Um, I, I really love playing guitar, so mostly it comes from me just strumming away on guitar. And then uh, generally in life, I have general ideas that I want to work on, so I always jot them down and... Um, uh, I try and think about ideas that will make people emotional, whether it be happy or sad. You know, I try to get bring out the most emotion I can. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's always changing. It's always changing. I could definitely listen to your voice forever. I can't wait for you to perform on the show. Okay. Now, Majorzy will be performing a little bit later on the show, so stay tuned for that. But last weekend, celebrities took their fashion to the next level as they dressed to the nines for one of the biggest events on the South African social calendar, the Vodacom Durban July. Afternoon Express was there to capture the the glamour and of course the races. We're here at the Gravel Race Course in Durban for one of the biggest events on the South African calendar, the Vodacom Durban July. And as much as it's always about the incredible races, it's also so much about the fashion. This year's theme is leader of the pack, and some people have really taken that literally. Celebrities, A-listers and politicians, including President Jacob Zuma, were all in attendance for the hottest event on Durban's social calendar. Our very own Genie D and Bonang Mateba were slaying in the style stakes but I spent the afternoon searching for someone dear to my heart. I found the one man in the industry that's taken away all of my man and style points, Jonathan Boyton Lee. You're looking incredible. Thanks, buddy. Sheldon did a really good job on this look. You're looking amazing. So as you said, Sheldon Kopman, always supporting proudly South African talent. Naked ape. There's a South African flag right there, we're flying it high, but you've worn Sheldon before, you know, he just understands men, man. And there's a cool story behind the suit because he stood in Moses Mabita Stadium, he looks up at the roof and that's what, that was his inspiration. So these are all the seats, this is the shape of the stadium roof, so made it in Durban, inspired by Durban, so it was so appropriate for the July. I must ask you, this relation that we've had with the Vodacom Next Level is amazing and I really, I love the youth and they've got so much power and so much passion to, to drive forward. What do you, why did you get involved and, and what, what is the purpose of this whole campaign? Well, uh, 
it's such a massive thing. It's not just about this weekend. So for this particular weekend, Vodacom Next Level had a competition where you could send in some, uh, you could write, write to them, you could send in an SMS, buy a dot to bundle, have to be under the age of 25, so it is about the youth. And you could win an all expenses paid like weekend to remember. So there's 10 guys, they've all got their partners, 10 guys and girls, all these youngsters. They've come here, they've got VVIP treatment, all the best parties, they've got all their food, all their accommodation. Some of these guys have never been on a plane before. They got given a free phone, they were crying, man. It's just so awesome. Like it, it really puts us in our place because we take it for granted, you know. We, we get given this treatment a lot of the time anyway. They're experiencing it for the first time and it's just so cool to see it through their eyes, man, and how much appreciation they have for it. And it's just such a cool thing that Vodacom are doing, empowering the youth. And, and they're holding a massive competition trying to discover um, new soccer players and fashion. And it's such a massive campaign and it's all about the youth, which is awesome. Thanks for all you're doing for the youth. I really, really am inspired by the work that you guys are doing. Vodacom Next Level got experience. It's an amazing experience right here at the Durban July. After the races, it was time to turn things up at KZN's hottest party and get answers to that all-important question, who are you wearing? What inspired you and how is this leader of the pack? So I'm dressed by uh, the Legacy of True Beauty and it's a, a Colombian designer, so I'm wearing something a little international, which is great. I feel like this pretty much said who I am, you know, and what I'm about, so. Standing by with Mimi. Who's all the way from Sturban Alon? You've yeah. kind of made your way to Derbs. You're looking incredible, by the way. Yep, uh, I'm dressed by uh, Oma Dema plus Fab. I'm my own leader, so I'm powerful <laughs> like that. So here I am. I'm just rocking what I'm rocking, and I'm doing me as best as I can. I'd like to take your camera downstairs. Oh! This dress is created by the wonderful Matome from Antheline, and it's been such a great experience. And being here with the SABC family is the um, Golden Cup. Honey, in times like these, you need to slay, slay, slay. <laughs> Lola Tando Major, right here from the Durban July, looking fab. Thank you. I think maybe I look amazing because I'm standing right next to you, so we make each other look amazing. <laughs> I like her. She can stay. Girls have gone all out today. What do you think about the guys and the rest of the fashion here today? Well, I, I want to talk about the guys, you know, that I look great. Um, um, everyone else, I mean, uh, well, my only competitors today were the women. I mean, the women are looking hot. And me? I did say leaders of the pack. I didn't say leader, leaders of the pack. <laughs> And what a day it has been here. Yeah, we've mingled with the cream of the crop. I've seen some of the most incredible fashion here today and interviewed some of the best, as well as witnessed some of the best horse races the country has to offer. Until next time, from the Durban July, goodbye. Durban, I must say a really big thank you. Your people are some of the most friendly in our country. I really enjoyed myself. And I don't know about you, but I'm definitely going to be at next year's Vodacom Durban July. Now, don't forget, if you're under the age of 25 and a Vodacom prepaid subscriber, to register for next level, simply dial star triple one star one two eight hash. There are also so many amazing bundles up for grabs there. After the break, we're in the kitchen making hummus from scratch. And we take a look at a floating bookstore that's currently docked in Cape Town. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, I'm super excited to be making something to do with breakfast on this Friday afternoon. And I'll tell you why. It's because I've seen a lot of the trends around the restaurants all across South Africa all moving towards innovating when it comes to the breakfast meals. No longer served only as a breakfast. All the menus seem to be saying all day breakfast. And we're really experimenting quite a lot. So if you haven't yet, we're going to show you today on Afternoon Express how to experiment with one form of that breakfast meal. And Clem's got a delicious recipe he's made or going to be making with mm -hmm. us today on the show. And I hope you guys are going to experiment with us. Cool. So we're making hummus with crispy fried eggs. Okay, yummy. I think it's actually like a traditional Middle Eastern dish and somehow it's just caught on and you're seeing it in restaurants all mm, over the country. Mm. So we're going to make our own version today. It's nice because I never really associate smokiness with a breakfast meal, which is exciting to see. It's got that like, sort of yeah. smoky texture that we're moving into. But I mean, you'll find that in the Middle East, they kind of, they're more bold with their mm. flavors when it comes to breakfast. I mean, using lemon, chili, paprika, all those bold flavors that we wouldn't normally use, but I mean... And in the Asias, I know in India I was serving, eating curry for breakfast, lunch exactly. and dinner. And even for dessert, they'd serve us like a roti with like ice cream on it. It's like ice cream and, and pancakes. It Why cool. not? Cool. So in my blend, I'm going to add some yogurt first. We're going to start with the hummus. By adding yogurt, it kind of lightens the dish and adds a little creaminess to it. Ah. And that slight acidity as well, which we love so much. Yes. So talk to me about making hummus. What is the basis of hummus? Traditionally, it would be 
chickpeas, right? They're okay. the base of your hummus. It's chickpeas and something called tahini. We're going to talk yes. about it in a second. Olive oil, garlic, um, a little bit of seasoning, salt and pepper, a little bit of pepper, and put it all up wow. and make a little... Okay. So we DIYing our own hummus. If you ever want to make one at home for a dip or something, you're welcome to go get the recipe from our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. What a cool recipe. Absolutely. So that goes <laughs> in. Um, and also another reason that I've taken some of the olive oil out is because we're actually using olive oil today to make an amazing little dressing. Oh, I yummy. call it smoked paprika oil. Okay. That just drizzled over our dish at the end. So a little bit of... So not to in. overindulge in our oil. So using yogurt is a nice... There we go. But you still nice want a bit of that like olive oil flavor. So and this is the tahini. Tahini. What it is is toasted sesame seeds that have been ground into a fine paste. Oh, I wow. absolutely love tahini. If you don't have tahini at home, which I can imagine a lot of people don't, yeah. A great substitute, substitute that I found is peanut butter. Yeah, yeah so I, think it's good. I can imagine that, that same texture. Cool. So a little bit of salt and pepper. Seasoning. That goes in. They actually take quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of salt and pepper. There goes the whole handful. <laughs> and we're going to split it up. Get away wow. from the machine. I like it really smooth. Yeah. It's it's great. Let, it long, let it go for a little bit longer to obviously get that smoothness in there. Absolutely. Wow. So we're going to work on that sauce I spoke about now. Oh, that looks amazing. We're gonna work on that sauce. Cool. Um, so what I've got in the pan is some cold um, extra virgin olive oil. Yes. And we're starting from cold because I want to infuse the flavors. And the flavors I'm talking about are spices Ooh. instead of frying them off initially. So I've got smoked paprika, paprika, and some dry chili flakes. Cool. That's gonna give it a nice little bit of a bite. And some be a beautiful color as well. Yes. I like using smoked paprika with normal paprika because they actually add different flavors. Yeah. The normal paprika adds a warm um, flavor to it, a very earthy, and obviously that smoked paprika adds that deep smoke as well. Okay, I see. So you also don't want to go completely intense one or the other, so to get like 50-50 of the two. A nice balance. A suggestion. Okay. And then obviously that bit of chili in there just because we need that heat. Yes. So I'm going to Middle East and why not? Okay, and you also obviously are going to bring that heat, that pan up uh, in terms of heat just to a point where it's going to start sizzling, simmering. Just to a simmer. Just to a simmer. Again, we don't want to toast our spices too much. Yes. Mm. And we're just going to balance it out with a little bit of lemon juice. So that's our sauce. That's going to get drizzled oh. on the dish in the end. I can't wait to finish off this recipe. If you want to go and find the recipe, it's on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. You can physically read it there. And speaking of reading, Logos Hope is the world's biggest floating book fair and is currently uh, at docked at the V&A waterfront in Cape Town with more than 5,000 books from as little as five rand for sale. We went to check out what all the fuss was about. Our first ships was launched in 1970 and part of the vision of the ship was to take uh, transport vehicles and teams from Europe out to India. About 1971, the Suez Canal closed and the ship was forced to come around Africa. And as the ship would stop in various ports, we also wanted to share literature uh, with people. And so that's how it originally started. As we moved port to port, we would open the ship, visitors would come on board, we would share literature with them. We like to say we bring uh, knowledge, help, and hope uh, to the peoples of the world. We bring knowledge through the bookstore. We have probably uh, 5,000 titles, uh, family, educational, Christian literature down on deck four. We bring knowledge through our different cultures, trying to, to help bring understanding. We bring help through uh, different opportunities. For example, we do eyeglass testing. Sometimes we might send out a mobile dental clinic, uh, build a library in a village. We try to arrange ahead of time before coming to the port. A little bit more about the ship itself. Uh, Logos Hope was originally built in 1973. In 2004, we bought the ship and took it to Croatia where we spent about five years preparing the ship. You know, we can carry legally 442 people at sea. It's a great ship. Everybody, of course, is volunteer. But I also often say it's like a, a job training program. A young person comes on board for one or two years, may end up uh, learning deck skills, engine skills, retail down on the book fair, a hotel or catering services. Uh, public service, public relations type work. And so after two years they leave, um, they've gained some life experience. I graduated in oceanography, so I always had a passion for oceans and for ships. At some point I went to Bible school 
and during Bible school I heard about the Lagos Hope and I was really excited about uh, the ship and the, the work of, uh, that it does with books and uh, bringing hope to the world and I was thinking that is a great way to mix my passion for ships and my passion for, for Jesus and so that's how I, how I joined the ship. I study as a journalist that time, I like my job, but I found it difficult to work in an environment when they think death is more important, they know a good story, it's more about the, you know, the money. And I really struggled with it, and I lost my purpose of life. And then somehow the ship came back to my mind, and I started to apply for it. It was difficult, but I made it, and then I really enjoyed it, and I now came to the ship to work Still, as a journalist, relates job with my skill, but now I can say I work with passion, with a life purpose. There were lots of people, lots of books. It's very interesting also to be on the world's biggest floating bookstore. It was definitely an amazing experience. I love reading and my boy is also loving reading, so we've really enjoyed the time. And I brought my wife with and my three boys, so it's really a great experience. You too. Okay, he wants to say also how much fun we're having. <laughs> and also they can go around through the Junior of Life. There's a nice picture gallery and we always have uh, some volunteers there to share their story with the visitors. And we also have the International Cafe, where they can have some refreshments. And we always have uh, some crew members there to engage with the visitors, to share their stories and to hear people's stories as well. So I will say, not just the books are the highlight, but also the people here are the highlight for you to visit. We're scheduled to sail on the 12th of July, and we head up to Walvis Bay for a couple of weeks, and we continue to work our way up uh, the west coast of Africa. Still to come on Afternoon Express, Kelly Schroeder and I talk menopause and we whip up another tasty Nutri Blast for you. That's after this. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3. Now, going through menopause can be quite the transition, and many women struggle to sleep, get hot flushes, and aren't always sure of how to manage it. Today, we have the lovely Kelly Schroeder back in the loft to give us some advice and also make a healthy, boosting Nutri Blast to help get you through menopause. Welcome back, Kelly. Hi, Jeannie. Now, when exactly does menopause take place in a woman's life, and what does it entail? Okay, menopause is a very normal phase in a woman's life. It happens you know, around our late 40s to early 50s where our menstruation tends to sort of decrease and then eventually stop. So it's, it is almost like a marker of us aging, but it is a really natural, normal thing and it doesn't need to be a disaster. Yeah, I don't know how <laughs> But a lot does change in a woman. I mean, it sets the kind of mark of a change of life. But how can a woman manage it? Because I think people tend to get quite, or women tend to get quite emotional, and there's so many different changes happening mm. in the body. How can it be managed in a, in a, in a yeah, easy way? Yeah, so basically what's happening during menopause is that there's a big drop in estrogen, which is our female hormone. So a lot of the things that estrogen does will shift and change, and it causes yeah. a little bit of distress sometimes. So the hot flash and the mood swings and the night sweats and fatigue and irritability, those things that are sort of traditionally associated with menopause are all part of that. Yeah. And then from a health perspective, the drop in estrogen might cause a loss in bone mineral density and then it changes the way we store fat. So women usually store fat around our hips and as you go through menopause, you tend to start storing more fat around your stomach. So okay. there are, you know, quite well-known effects and also doctors understand menopause. So if you're really struggling and there's, it feels unmanageable to you and you really have terrible symptoms, speak to your doctor. You don't have to be completely in isolation about it. Yeah, well, loss of sleep and I think uh, hot flushes. Is there any way that this kind of thing can be managed through diet? I'm one of those people that like to, that believe that food can change everything. But can diet affect uh, how, you, how you respond to menopause? Well, yes, that is my passion. That's why I do what I do, because I really, really do know that food can help us. So yeah. just like every other situation in life, Food can help us yes, to handle it Yes, I knew it. it. I knew I was always right. This is why we're friends. <laughs> food fixes everything. Okay, but what kind of foods and how can it affect menopause? Okay, so 
just generally speaking, if you are healthy, menopause will be handled better. So if you're eating a healthy diet full of whole grains, vegetables, healthy fats, enough protein, enough balance. I've said this to you so many times about I so know. many things, but it, it really listening. does apply here as well. So apart yeah. from specific ingredients, you need to have a good solid base of a healthy diet because what will happen then is you will also reduce your risk of other lifestyle diseases that happen as we age. So cardiovascular disease, and if you're changing the way you store your fat, it will help you to manage your yeah. blood glucose levels, it will help you to manage your weight. Yeah. Okay, so then if we're talking about specific nutrients that are really going to help yeah. Well, let's see then what we've got here. Sure. Ladies, we have got the ultimate Nutri Blast for you. If you are going through menopause, I think this is, I mean, all these flavor combinations, this is going to be quite an interesting mix. Okay, so what are those ingredients that we can put in to, if, to help change or make change of life a little bit easier? Yeah. All right, so the first thing to notice here is the beautiful color. So there is an absolute rainbow here of different beautiful fruits and vegetables. So that's a wonderful way to start. And yeah. you can do this with your food, but it's so great putting it all together in one thing. Okay, so, so kale, kale and spinach. It just never gets old for me. They're actually really good sources of calcium. Oh, I love kale, yeah. love spinach. Obsessed. So remember what I said about bone mineral density? You really want to protect your bones, so the calcium in those vegetables will help. Great. Another vegetable, there's some carrots. Great. And those peaches, both of those are lovely sources of beta carotene, which is a precursor to vitamin A, okay. really healthy. Helps what does vitamin A give you? Okay. And then we've got the berries and the cherries full of beautiful yes. antioxidants. Love. Have you noticed I'm putting in what I like them what I like most. <laughs> More of that for the flavour. Peel one of these bananas Ooh, while you're doing cherries the cherries. And berries. There. Love. Oh, I can't get enough of cherries. So cherries also help with sleep. So they contain melatonin, so they help to calm you down a little bit. And Whoa. if you're having hot flashes and feeling a little bit irritable and all you really need is some sleep. Amazing. That's a lovely ingredient to include. And also a very good tip when you're making your Nutri Blast is in fact to use frozen uh, berries, I think. Yes, it was. and then so you don't have to use so ice. much ice. Yeah, okay, well we're going to throw ice in anyway. And then we've got... Make it nice and cold. Ooh. The last little magical ingredients here are flax meal and chia seeds. So those two contain omega-3 fatty acids, which will help with healthy brain function and mood swings. So they help to stabilize your moods. And the flax meal is full of lignans, which is like a phytoestrogenic compound. So what that means is that it helps to mimic estrogen a little bit in your oh, body. Really? Mm. And is flax like flaxseed? Yes, exactly. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a ground source of fiber as well, isn't yes. it? Yes, very okay. good source Amazing. Of fiber. I'm learning. You see, <laughs> all your information is not falling on deaf ears. Okay, and let's whip up our Nutri Blast. I think this is going to be a goodie. Actually, they're always good. We could have thrown in water as well to dilute it a bit, but, but it worked why? well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's nice and thick. Yeah. Oh, wow. It literally is just a meal in a glass. It is. It'll be so satisfying. Okay. Thank you. And remember, if you want to thicken it up, don't add the water. If you want to dilute it a little bit and make it all nice and easier to drink, mm. I like it double thick, but oh, throw in some water for extra. Okay. How good Cheers. is that? Cheers. Mmm. Mm. That is so delicious. Definitely one of my favorites. Ladies, let's keep healthy and watch what we're taking in to give us that helping boost. Visit NutriBullet.co.za for more delicious and healthy recipes that can help you achieve that healthy lifestyle. We are also excited to be giving away a beautiful Nutri-Bullet right here on Afternoon Express, perfect to help you live that healthy lifestyle. So, to stand a chance of winning, all you need to do is simply SMS the keyword Nutri-Bullet, your name and city, to 33728. SMSs cost one rand fifty each, T's and C's apply, and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. You yourself can have your very own Nutri-Bullet like we have in the loft. After the break, it's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express, so stay right where you are. Express yourself. Express yourself. 
Win at home on Afternoon Express, where three design contestants are turning three empty properties at Valdivia Estate in the Cape Winelands into dream homes using finishes provided by Caesarstone and Plascon. Vote for your favourite and you could win. Yes, get excited, it's that time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Now today is the deadline for our design contestants' master bedrooms and they've been working around the clock to get them done in time. Let's head over to Valdevi to see what they've produced. First up, ladies and gentlemen, is Rudolf Jordan. Interestingly, he's taken his interior design inspiration from international fashion design. It's time to see if his design dream came true. Yeah, the space is looking amazing. We mentioned this idea of you being inspired by international fashion design. Uh, talk us through how you incorporated that. Yes, I was inspired by Ralph Lauren, which is synonymous with the polo lifestyle. And what I do like about his style is that it's very masculine, but it's also very soft. I went with darker greens. It's a color that is associated with both male and female. But then I also contrasted it with a lot of charcoals, which he also uses, and dark blacks. I love that you've handcrafted a lot of stuff in here. Maybe you haven't yourself, but you've brought in a lot of handcrafted uh, items in here. Talk us through them. Yeah, it was really important for me to carry on that, that theme of handmade items. So we have some handmade ceramics, which are beautiful. I have a handmade um, throw over here, made from felt. And then we also have some other basket way that it really adds a bit of texture to the space. How have you chosen to express yourself in this room? I looked at the architectural elements. We have point, line, shape, and form that I've incorporated in this space. And I think it all pulls together in the end. As an example, we can see that the set of lines used in the headboard would then become this back wall panelling which are squares and that shape would then become a form in the Ottoman scene in the dressing room. I think Anne's going to be very happy with your colour choices. I think Ark are going to really like your design inspiration. It's all basically going to come down to uh, marketability with Simon. Yeah, well, I think the space is ready for anyone to really move in and that makes it a good seller. Mm -hmm. And on that point, I'm going to draw the line and tell you that I think you're on form. I'm honestly really impressed with Rudolf's master bedroom. Up next, Joanne Fenter. Joanne! <laughs> what the heck? Hi! Are you sleeping on the job? Oh, yeah, it's been a really hectic week. Great oh, week. I'm shame, so tired. Man. But it's done, is it? Is it done? Basically, everything's done, yes. My out of the box. Headboard idea, I went into the wall. So the people that are moved in here can have a beautiful storage space to put anything they want in here. And the grey and greenish cotton linen fits perfectly with the timber floors. Then I have these amazing lamps that are dimmable. So when you go to sleep, you can just dim them a little bit and then up again when you're awake or want to see more, want to read. What do you think each judge will say? I think Anna's going to say that it's matchy matchy again because I'm using In The Mood uh, again and um, I am bringing black through uh, in, in, in a few elements and I'm using concrete again and all of the natural colours again. I think Ark will like what I've done with the trusses because I exposed the structure of the architecture. From what I've seen so far, Simon really likes the idea of having mirrors in these rooms because it opens up the space and so I think he'll love that. One thing that I have noticed though is that you've only got two drawers for storage. I have added the storage space in the built-in closets. They are exposed closets so you'll be seeing the clothes but that's really trending at the moment so I think they should reconsider if they think that it looks unfinished. Okay, well Stefan has said when he walked into the space, he said she's kind of going for that incomplete look and I can kind of see that. I mean, there's certain elements that aren't quite finished just yet and some elements that are quite minimalist. Mm -hmm. So I'm going for the minimalist look, like that is what they're going to get from me and I am going to stand behind it, I really like it, that's who I am and I, I think it's trending and it looks amazing. Well, Shwane, well done, I know it's been a long two weeks, you are exhausted, head back to bed and your quality products. Thank you. <laughs> it's all over to our judges now, I wonder whether they'll say Shwane or Shwa Yay. <laughs> Last but not least, Minente. So Minentle, I'm really proud of you, my friend. After the big stress of the last time, you've managed to complete this on time. It's looking incredible. Uh, thank you very much. I must say I'm very proud of myself. Well, Minentle, it's bold, it's exciting, and I really love all the elements you brought together. But what are your three favorite things in this room? Definitely my feature wall. Um, I like how I played around with the different Plascon colors. Uh, as I felt, I played it too safe with the guest bedroom. I like how it's very bold, so I'm expecting people to either like it or not. Hoping they like it. I really love it. 
And secondly, definitely the bed. I couldn't help it but uh, go for this, a similar frame. This one is timber compared to the other one that was steel and the color is very light as I say, I was keeping the room very monochromatic. And thirdly, uh, definitely my, my built-in cupboards, which were like done in the day. That, that was like the main thing I was stressing about, so I'm quite happy with those. Over and above them being done on time, I'm very happy with the aesthetic look of them. I have these huge mirrors, which definitely make the room seem bigger. In terms of practicality, they're very practical. They have a great deal amount of storage, which I feel uh, Simon's gonna like, because it pretty much adds value to the room. And Bell did say to you that this room needs to become a hard-working space. How did you try and achieve that? Looking at Valdivie, it's very far, so I would definitely consider that uh, a person might want to work mm. in their room. I have a desk and a chair, and I've created this nice workspace. Well, dude, you're really living up to your name. This room is there on all levels. Well done, man. <laughs> Proud of you. Proud of you. <laughs> the thing. Well, I'm not surprised about the quality of work our three design contestants have delivered in their master bedroom. It just goes to show what hard work and determination can bring. It's over to our judges now, though, and you at home can vote for your favorite on privateproperty.co.za. Well, let's take a look at how well each of our design contestants stuck to their budgets. Minentle for Team L Decoration had a projected budget of 89,852 Rand. They actually stuck very close to their budget with a total of 88,851 Rand spent. His biggest expense was the built in cupboards of 39,017 Rand. Joanne and Team Vizi had a conservative projected budget of 45,500 Rand. They ended up way over budget with 77,200 Rand spent. That's a difference of 31,700 Rand. Crazy. Rudolf and Team Real Estate had a massive projected budget of 135,000 Rand. In the end, he only spent 118,420 Rand, which is under his projected budget, but still far higher than the other design contestants. Remember, if you can vote for your favorite master bedroom and stand a chance to win big, here's how. Vote for your favorite design contestant's master bedroom on privateproperty.co.za and stand a chance of winning Plascon paint to the value of 5,000 Rand. You also automatically get entered into the draw to win one of the three finished apartments valued at over 3 million Rand. Win a home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now make sure you catch Pacella this evening at the new time slot of 6 p.m. on SABC2. This week, the team goes to Bloemfontein. Paul Rothman visits the young singing sensation Brendan Paper and his family at their home. Heino Schmidt gets inspired by motivational speaker Sherry Brainart, who was the first South African living with Down syndrome to graduate from a tertiary institution. Paul also catches up with Cheetahs rugby player Sergio Peterson on the field. Now, Clem and Danilo are in the kitchen wrapping up Meat Free Week. Well, with lots to do tonight, I hope you guys are also cooking something delicious with us right here on Afternoon Express. Today, we're wrapping up our Meat Free Week on the show today, and we're cooking an all-day kind of breakfast that we're making. Clem is making us yeah. a, a homemade hummus, which looks absolutely amazing. I may have snuck a little taste of it. It tastes super delicious, and you're putting it with a bunch of eggs and on toast. But You've mentioned crispy eggs, or, or crunchy, or fried, or... Crispy. 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 There How we do go. You crisp an egg? There we go. So all it is, is it's going to be a fried egg that we're going to cook in the pan, and we're going to cook it until it gets a bit of that crispy bottom. Okay, I see. So with the browned the edges kind there of There we thing. go. And it's all about texture. So a little bit of olive oil in, and we're going to start adding our eggs. Mmm, this is going to be the sign of a good chef, right? Can he get his egg to not separate? Will the yolk remain together? Will he manage to do it? Yes, you do! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, my word. So, I must just add about the hummus that we made earlier. Yes. I also added quite a bit of lemon juice in there just to add some extra flavor. Okay. And I forgot to add the garlic to camera. Oh, my gosh. How but can you have hummus without garlic? If you're panicking at home, please don't worry. All of those details are obviously on the website, uh, on the recipe there. So, if maybe you've witnessed, you're like, I didn't see that, it is there. So, don't worry. Cool. So, that Ooh. goes there. I'm going to pop this over here. You're the only chef I know who's like put four eggs in a pan together and I just was cut them up separately. I was going to do five, but anyway. Sure. So what I'm doing now is I'll pop the lid on. That way the whites will cook a lot faster than the yolks. Oh, and we'll still get that crispy bottom, which are cooking really fast. I'll turn the heat down. Cool. 
So to our plate. Are you gonna do your own one? Okay. Cool, I'll make my own one. So I like to add quite a bit. I mean, the stuff oh, is amazing. Yeah. Are we serving it with some charred toast that we've got over there? Mm. And I haven't added oh, any plain. butter to the toast. Yes. Because hummus makes an amazing substitute for butter. Aha. Uh -huh. So if you're making sandwiches, instead of butter, try a little bit of the hummus. Add some more flavor there too. Cool, there you go, that's you. Cool, so that's, I can use this one now for my plate, right? Yes, you can. I think I'm gonna make Jeannie and Miles ones look cool. I'm gonna see if we can. A bit of a yin yang. This. How much must be. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna add a little bit of that yogurt again, just again to add the little tang. And you'll notice that our hummus is a lot thinner than a normal hummus, and that's because of the lightness that the yogurt gives it. Ah. I didn't notice that, because this mm -hmm. has got a really nice texture to it, which I, I thoroughly enjoy, Clem. So if you ever are going to eat a hummus, please don't go buy them outside. Please just go and try and make your own hummus at home if you can. It's really simple. It's really simple for us to make. Absolutely. So I've got some wilted spinach. Yep. Again, just want to add some more flavor and some more goodness in there. It's breakfast, so why not go crazy and just add like the extra spinach? Oh, that's delicious. It's almost like you're taking a, an egg, what you call it? Benedict? Not, but not a Benedict. Benedict doesn't come on the spinach. It's eggs oh, Florentine. Oh, yes. It's, eggs oh, Florentine look at you. comes on the spinach. Look at me. <laughs> Outsmarted our chef once and there we go. ever. Go crazy. Cool, thanks. I'll use lots of spinach because it's really good for us. And obviously, you want to get your maximum amounts of protein in, and spinach has got the really high amounts of iron in it, which is great for you. winter. Me. Cool. Let me just kind of add it on there? Yes, you're welcome to. I've kind of finished my plating. Ooh, no, I, want, I want that look. It looks nice. It's rustic. You can see the bit of that, that crispiness on there. Yes, there we go. Oh, yummy. And this guy's going to go straight on there. Who needs, because everyone obviously goes with the tomato sauce and eggs thing. I also got a hummus and eggs, so I think we've got the better structure oh. going on here. It looks amazing. And of course, looking about the tomato sauce, so we're not doing tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. We've got this amazing paprika oil that we made. This aioli, which you've kind no, of No, aioli, that's the mayonnaise, but we just gone oh. out crazy with the... Oh, delicious. Can you smell see, it's that? taking that color and that smell is going to give it a nice bite. It actually smells like chorizo. Yes, which I love the most about this because all your other flavors here are subtle. They're creamy. They're, they're rich. This is going to add a nice like mm, zing to the dish. There we go. go. That's yours. This is going to go just up like this. And all that's left is to put something fresh on top. And you can find this recipe on our website. It's afternoonexpress.co.za. It's one of those all-day breakfasts you can make for yourself. You can either make it uh, sort of as a proper breakfast dish for someone's birthday or anything like that, or I would really suggest that you try and consider making this as a lunch or a dinner meal. I honestly am always a big fan of eating breakfast for any times of the days. Absolutely. I just want to make sure that I get this on here. Oh, this I'm is so be... impressed with this. Look at that. Look it at yours. It looks so good. Yours is actually quite full of stuff. Mine I've kept quite simple. So that's it. Done like this. I'll carry the bread and my little version to serve to Jeannie. Would you take the other one? Let's go. Let's go and have some fun. Hope these guys are excited because the weekend is here and I hate cooking on the weekends. And I know how to make my own hummus. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I absolutely am a huge hummus fan. That, that looks so incredible. Impressed. Looks good, eh? Wow. That's Look at ours. Oh, this is great. What do you mean ours? Well, I kind of made a smaller <laughs> version of it. I just thought... Well, I... Us, this isn't a date. Fun. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, bye. <laughs> I'm kidding. Wow, well, this is absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Dig in, guys. It would be amazing. Well, actually, I suppose we should wait a bit because we want to get our performance in, right? <laughs> Oh, we almost forgot about Majosi. <laughs> <laughs> so no, good. the poor guy's just standing there. <laughs> Live and after an express, Majosi, take it away.
heart is tethered to my soul For now I have to let you know This is our last time A last goodbye This is our last time A last goodbye And when I see Jesus Christ, I know he'll greet me with arms stretched wide, and he'll say, he's proud of you. That song is legendary. Last goodbye. What is the big meaning behind this track, dude? He told us earlier you just weren't listening. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was absolutely beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank so, you so, much so much for that. Girls. You can Thank tell you. Danilo what it's about since he missed it. <laughs> um, it's just a story about a father on his deathbed saying goodbye to his daughter, basically. Sure. Don't ask me why I wrote that song, I just did. <laughs> it's beautiful. I, I cried a bit. Yeah. <laughs> can I tell you a little anecdote, really funny little story? Um, yeah. my, while you guys dish up, you're welcome to, to eat the food. Um, when I was uh, out, at, my mom was out at a wedding, and I got this SMS from her. And I don't, I don't really. She doesn't really SMS much. She, her technology are terrible. And she's like, um, I'll, I'll do the voice because I don't know how you have voices on text messages. But she's like, you know, my son, I, um, I met this guy. I'm sure he must be a Christian, and his, he, his name is um, something about Jawling or uh, Joe's or something like this. Um, do you know him? He's a brilliant singer. It's like, well, my Joyce. She's like, I think so. I'm gonna go speak to him. So she met you at a wedding the other day and was just blown away by your performance. Didn't know who you were necessarily and, and thought that you should break into the industry. And I'm like, yeah, he's kind of like the biggest thing. So, uh, <laughs> well done, Mom. Thanks, Mom. on Twitter. Yeah, oh, my word. You're, You're amazing. amazing. Thank you. Oh, this yeah. is incredible. Clem, thanks for delicious food. Kelly, for always inspiring us. I really, really take a lot from your, your chats, even though I'm not going through what, uh, what we were chatting about. But uh, also, cool. <laughs> also cool to have you with us in the last minute, Josie. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming through. It's been an absolutely amazing show. Your voice is everything to me. And thank you so much for joining. We'll be see you again next week. Same time, same place. Afternoon Express, SABC3. We'll see you then. Good night and happy eating. Bye. Bye.